word that proceeds not out of the mouth of a preacher, but out of the mouth of God. Different between the preacher's mouth and the mouth of God. We're living in such a world that preachers are mouthing off. Very few preachers allow their mouth to be used by God. When your mouth is being used by God, you have his word to back you up. Now, the Lord said, do it again. So since the Lord said, do it again, I'm going to do it again, but from a different scripture. I talk from Psalm 103. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. But the Lord told me to talk again from a different passage of Scripture, but the very same words. I want to call to your attention this morning the 145th Psalm. And notice the eighth verse. Psalm 145, 8. I don't want to talk about man. I just want to talk about the Lord. I cannot brag on man, but I can thank God for my brother and my sister in Christ. The only person that I owe my boasting to is to the Lord and not even to self. I am to talk this morning from Psalm 145, verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. Why don't y'all text that? Text about the Lord. So others will know the gigantic difference between the Lord and man. Amen. The Lord is, that's a declarative statement, the Lord is gracious. The Lord is full of compassion. The Lord is slow to anger. The Lord is. Are you thinking? Not just of mercy, but of great mercy. Because he's great in himself. All his attributes are great. So I just want to talk about the Lord this morning. If you wake up in the morning thinking about the Lord instead of your problems, you can worship God in spirit and in truth. You ought to carry your problems to the Lord in prayer before you come to the house of prayer. So that when you arrive here, your heart is already full of praise. They ain't got to wait on nobody to light your fire. It's already lit because you have talked with God before you arrived here. So I just want to talk about the Lord. So to put your mind at ease, the title of the Lord means he is the ruler over heaven and earth. He is the only one to put us Afro-Americans at ease. He is the only one that can overrule the president. He is the only one that can overrule the governor. He is the only one that can overrule the mayor. All right. So for the year 2020, remember that God rules and super rules every man on the face of this earth. 
You can have the best year of your life if you keep your eyes focused on the Lord and not man. Amen. These descriptions of the Lord that's in our text verse, it cannot be said about man. Only about the Lord. First of all, it tells us the Lord is gracious. That comes from that root word grace. And when I think about the attribute of God that has been entitled grace, it is that attribute that causes God to give us more than what we deserve. Amen. The Lord is gracious. In spite of your performance, in spite of my performance down here on earth, the Lord is gracious to you and to me. Pastor, I want to see that in the Word. Well, we're going to take you to the Word. 116th Psalm. I want you to notice that fifth verse. Psalm 116. Verse 5. 116th Psalm, fifth verse says, Gracious is the Lord, yeah. and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That, that's in order. That's, that's in order. He is the only one that is gracious all the time. Yeah. He is the only one that is righteous all the time. And he is the only one that is merciful all the time. Yeah. See, see that, that, that's what you praise God for. And in, in the prayer meeting, I, I'm teaching them the difference between thanksgiving and praise. You thank God for what he has done for you. But when you praise him, if he never give you one more blessing, you exalt him, you lift him up because of who he is. We've got to learn how to praise God. God does everything for you and me because of who he is and not because of who we are. Uh oh So we ought to praise him. Yeah. First of all, he is gracious. Just look at the Lord. Allowing his son to rise on the just as well as the unjust. Allowing his reign to fall on the good as well as the evil. Why does he do it? Because of us? No, because he is. Are you listening this moment? Second of all, the Holy Spirit said you need to go back and preach that again from a different verse and remind them that the Lord is full of compassion. If the truth was told, most of us are full of selfishness. But that virtue to be able to love deeply and to show mercy to others that we don't know, that comes from the Lord's attribute of compassion. You're looking at me strange. I know why you're looking at me strange. You're looking at it from the natural point of view, and I'm trying to show you from the spiritual point of view. Do you want an illustration? Come on here, good Samaritan. A priest, a religious man. He passed by when he saw a brother in need. Levi did the same thing, came by and just went on the other side. Yeah. 
But Hagar, a stranger, didn't know the man. He went to his aid. Why? Because he had in his heart bound up his wounds. Had his own, hallelujah, yeah. personal, yeah. I want to call it band knee. Can I say band knee? Yeah. yeah, bound up his wounds with all and wrapped him. And he had so much compassion, didn't know the man, didn't know his name, and he picked him up and put him on his own beast, took him to the end. Say, you all take care of it. And whatever charge is incurred, I'll pay it when I come back. No, 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 that's compassion. To have a deep love for somebody, watch this, that you don't even know. And then move out and try to aid them in their distress. That's compassion, Leo. And I just want to tell you the Lord is watch this fool he's so full of it nothing else can get no room for nothing else to get in All right. full of compassion let's go to psalm 112 verse 4 psalm 112 verse 4 the book of psalms one, one, two. Fourth verse. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He, meaning God, is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. Amen. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. And now I'm going to tell you all the main reason why the Lord had me to preach this verse again, but from a different passage of Scripture. Because I want to tell you every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in this building. God does not want you to be like your earthly mother, nor your earthly father. God wants you to be like him. Amen. We use that for a cop out. That that's the way my mother was. That was the way my father was. Well, let me ask you one question. Are you a child of God? Amen. If you're a child of God, then you ought to be like your heavenly father. I want to stand flat-footed today to tell you that our Father is slow to anger. And most of us are quick to get angry. And we think it's a spoke when it's a S-I-N. It's a sin. Sin is anything in thought, word, or deed that's contrary to God. No helping this morning, but I'm gonna stand flat footed and, and teach this morning because too many of us are destroying our homes, destroying the church through quick anger. All right. yeah. Every time somebody says, oh, I'm angry about this, I'm angry about that. Well, when you ever gonna learn how to have peace of mind, All right. peace of heart, yeah. and enjoy life? Listen. This is not a joke, what I'm saying. Because you don't know that you're on the wrong road when you stay angry all the time. You don't know where you are headed by traveling the road of anger. You are not harming the person you are angry with. You are really harming yourself. Yes, sir. But I'm going somewhere this morning. See, the only thing I got to do is warn you. You can continue your way all you want. You got to face the consequence. Listen. I was always taught that anger is one step short of danger. 
You don't know it. When you say angry all the time, you headed for danger no matter how you feel within. The word of God says you're on your way to destruction. All right. yes, sir. So I want to stand today and show you how you look in the eyesight of God right. when you are quick to get angry. Y'all listening this morning? Yes, I'm going to one chapter and get two verses and I'm going to sit down. That's not on the string. The Lord gave it to me when I went back to the office. I apologize, but these two verses the Holy Spirit just gave to me is not on the string. Go to the book of Proverbs. 14th chapter. The 17th and the 29th verse. Two verses out the same chapter. Proverbs 14, 17, and Proverbs 14, 29. Proverbs 14, chapter, 17, verse, 14, chapter, 29, verse. Listen to the word of God. Stop listening to yourself. Yourself is leading you wrong, and you don't even know it. Proverbs 14, 17 says, He that is soon angry, dealing foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. I want to tell you on the authority of God's word, in case you don't know, they don't teach you this in school. Your own anger can make a fool out of you. God said it that self. So don't, 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 don't try to make excuses for you popping up like popcorn and want to explode in somebody's face. Are you listening to the Holy Spirit? Now listen to Proverbs 14, 29. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that is hasty of spirit, exalted folly. I don't hear no men saying nothing to me. But men, I'm going to tell you to your face, God is right and you're wrong. You don't control your family through your anger. Instead, you control your family through love. You dominating your children by getting angry. And because of that, you are driving a wedge between you and your child. Because I know if I say something, he going to blow up. So now, I want to get back to the law. I want to brag on the law. I tell him in my prayer, Lord, I thank you that you are not like us. We are so quick to get angry and then want us to pacify you like a little baby when you, no, 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 no. No, somebody got to stand flat footed and tell the truth. It is a sin to be quick to anger and stay angry all week, all month, and all year long. So, Lord, I need some help. Lord, Lord, I need some help. And you the only one can help me. So, So I went to the Lord, and the Lord showed me how people treat him and how people going to treat you. Whoa! So, if people are doing to you what they did to me, learn from me. How to be slow right. yes, to anger. Y'all listen this morning? Yes, I, I, I want to get your attention. We go in the book of Psalms. I'm staying in the book of Psalms. Psalm 78, 36, 
through 38. Psalm 78. 36 through 38. Psalm 76. I'm glad y'all listening. Thank you. Psalm 78. 36 through 38. I'm going to see how many people are going to say amen now. Are you there? Psalm 78, 36 says, Nevertheless, guess what they did? They did flatter him with their mouth. And they lied unto him with their tongue. I'm not a fool. People still flatter and lie to the preacher today. If they lied to God, if they flattered God, guess what? They going to lie and flatter the preacher. And they think they fooling you. But they don't know when you got the Holy Spirit. The Spirit can give you discernment to know when it's sincere and when it ain't nothing but flatter. All right. All right. Come on. Preacher, show me in God's word how to handle it when people flatter you. Insincere remark. And how can you handle it when you know people lying to you? Y'all done got quiet in here now. We, we, y'all got quiet in here now. But I want to let you know that when you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will warn you. You're trying to slip up on people, but the Holy Spirit already don't want you. better watch them. You better watch them. And if you are led, guided, controlled by the Holy Spirit, you can listen to them and you can watch them. But you don't have to take in what they say. So preacher, that's my problem. So not that, not preacher, that's my problem. I've been flattered on my job. I've been lied to on my job. How do I handle it? Handle it God's way and not your way. All right. Here you go. And I'm glad this is the word of God. The word of God tell you why people flatter and why people lie. Y'all looking at the word of God. It says, people will flatter you. They flatter God. They will lie to you because you lied to God. For their heart was not right with God. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. I don't hear no amens. I don't hear no I wish the walls could talk to me now. God is the only one that will tell you the truth about yourself. Stop listening to yourself. I, I, better, I, better, I better make that nail flat. There are people that specialize in flattering you. There are people that specialize in lying on you. Yeah. And you trying to figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out and just take God at his word. Yes, it may not be anything wrong with you. It might be something wrong with them. Yes, and there go, that's all I need. That's all I need. People hard ain't right. People ain't steadfast. In their covenant of God. So, 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 preacher, now help me solve my problem. Stop trying to be like people in Hollywood and ask the Lord to help you to be like Him. Right. See, see, most of us want to be rich and famous, so we, we think we got people looking up to us because we rich and famous. You can be rich and famous and I still look down to you. 
Because I'm looking up. I'm looking beyond you. I'm looking unto Jesus who's the author and finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he despised the cross. He despised the shame. And he went on to the cross. And right now he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Lord, I don't want to be rich. Lord, I don't want to be famous. I want to be like you. Now we come back to the attribute that we talked about. Here it is. But he, meaning God, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity. If you want to learn how to be slow to anger, you got to go to God and ask God to teach you how to forgive. Most of us don't know how to forgive. So if the parents don't know, how do we expect the children to know? In order to learn how to forgive, you got to go to God who is the forgiving father. Hmm. I want y'all to see this. Because of who God is, well, what makes him who he is, the book says he forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. When your anger is not righteous, but sinful, the only thing you have in the back of your mind is to destroy whoever called you to get angry. But when you're full of compassion and you want to please God and not yourself, you have to pray to God while the temperature is rising and ask the Lord to help me. How many can hold up your hand this morning and tell the Lord, I need help in my temper? Lord, I need help in my temper. Usually my temper is used for the wrong reason instead of the right reason. I want to share all this secret about God. Oh, that's why I love to praise him. I praise him in private. I can praise him in public. When you get the right kind of heart, when you learn how to forgive, then you can do the last part of this 38 verse. Yea, mean yes. Many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. All right, amen. Uh, I, wish I, had, I, had, I wish I had some Bible students. I, I wish I had some Bible students who believe God and not themselves. God can teach you how to forgive, not one time, but many times. You got to listen to God and not yourself. Amen. The only solution to the problem of fast, quick anger is to learn how to forgive. And you don't learn that in no school. You don't learn that in no university. You learn that down on your knees and the Holy Spirit teaching you out of God's book how to forgive. Yes, sir. That's it. Come on. Listen. Somebody already got it in their notes, but you need to put it in your notes if you don't have it. Forgiveness is a threefold promise. Forgiveness means, first of all, I will never bring it up to God again. Second, 
Forgiveness is a promise. I will never bring it up to others again. I'm talking about forgiveness. Because when God forgives, he puts all of our sins behind his back. He don't see them anymore. If he don't put them behind his back, when God forgives, he casts your sin and my sin in the sea of forgiveness for them never to rise up again. I wish I had some Bible students. And then forgiveness threefold. It's a promise I will never bring it up to myself. So when you learn how to forgive, you will be slow. You know when Satan is using certain people trying to cause you to get angry. Because the Holy Spirit is a revealer. Not only will he reveal the word of God till you'll be staying God's word long enough, he'll show you sometime the motives of people while they are coming to you. But listen, I want to stand here and tell y'all this one statement. I cannot count how many times God has forgiven me. And you will never learn how to forgive as long as you keep your eyes on yourself and not on God. Amen. Well, preacher, uh, you just don't know. No, I admit, I don't know. But I want to throw this back at you. How many times have you hurt God and God still forgave you? People stuck in the pit because they never learned how to forgive. All right. They can always bring up stuff. Now, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it. They bring up stuff to me that happened in Mount Tabor when I wasn't here. All right. wow. And I ain't going to touch it. Oh. I'm not responsible for what happened when I wasn't here. All right. I'm only responsible for what happened while I'm here. Yeah. But when you are taught by God, to forgive, hello somebody, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he will help you not to bring it up again. Amen. All right. The Lord told me to go back because most people don't know the Lord. They know churches, they know pastors, they can talk about churches, they can talk about pastors, but they cannot talk about the Lord as freely as they talk negatively about churches and about pastors. All right, I'm gonna close. The Lord says, you need to close. My last point, Supposed to had been, hello, the Lord has shown great mercy on who? But the Holy Spirit is saying to me, you need to flatten that nail in their minds and in their hearts. Our prayer every day should be, Lord, help me to become more like you. And some people don't know it. And I want to show them that God is not holding anything you did wrong against you in heaven, against him in heaven right now. All them sins you did when you were young, all them sins you did when you were middle age, all them sins you did when you was whole, older and now I want you to hear the good news. 
God is not holy. All right. Any of those sins All right. against you. Amen. Pastor, I need to see that. I need to see that, Pastor. Well, I'm leaving the Old Testament. I'm going to Hebrews. Hebrews. 10th chapter. 15 through the 17th verse. Hebrew. 10th chapter. Y'all there? Yes, sir. Hebrews. And now, to wake y'all up, anybody who in here sleep this morning, remember it didn't say Hebrews, it said Hebrews. So, wives, tell your husband that the book of Hebrews says he supposed to brew the coffee and not she. All right, I'm getting ready to shout now. Hebrews 10th chapter, 15 through the 17th verse. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. Those are special days, and that refer to the day of Pentecost. He said, I will put my laws into their hearts, yeah. and I will write. Them in their mind. And hallelujah. And their sins and iniquities. I have decided to remember them no more. Somebody will be shouting in here now. I don't care how many people come by and remind you of what you were. You need to tell them, look at me again, child. I'm not what I was. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things. And all things have become new. Now you want to know how God can do it? Come on, Sister Pianist. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to my last point. God will show great mercy to you. I want to get happy by telling you why God can remember your sin and my sins no more. Because of the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that flows from the highest mountain and go down to the lowest valley. It will never, it will never, it will never lose its power. Somebody say hallelujah. If you know the blood has covered all your sin, past sin, present sin, Future sin, you ought to shout the blood. I said the blood. I better sit down now because I'm about to get happy. Only thing I can brag on is the blood. The blood that was shed for you. The blood that was shed for me. Thank God for his blood. So that's why I got good news for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. And let me tell you something this morning. Stop condemning folks because of their wrongdoing. Because you have your own personal wrongdoing, and they have their own personal wrongdoing. But you ought to tell them there is a fountain. Fear! We're blood.
draw from Emmanuel's vein. And, and don't be so proud to let him know. And there, there. sinners can plunge yeah. beneath that flood. Yes, Lose all yeah. their guilty stand. Yeah. Point them to Calvary. Yeah. Don't point them to the church. Right. But point them to Calvary. Yeah. The dying thief yeah. rejoice to see yeah. that fountain in his day. And thou may I. Do y'all hear me? Thou may I. Watch it. Though vile as he. Even though I'm a preacher. I'm vile in the eyesight of God. In comparison to his holiness. Thou may I. Though vile as he. Wash off. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. Wash off. My sins away. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. I thank the Lord for the blood. Don't you ever brag on yourself. Just brag on the blood. The blood. Done sign my name. Don't be concerned about church membership. Make sure the blood of the Lamb done sign your name. So when the road is called up yonder, you will be there. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. The Lord saying you got to help somebody. Because somebody is hurting right now. Because somebody in their family won't forgive them. Well, can I help you this morning? If there's anybody that won't forgive you, that's their problem. If there's anybody holding grudges, that's their problem. But make sure you do like Jesus. When they stab you to your heart, pray from your heart, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. God got it fixed. Just as sure as you stab others, the least person you don't suspect will slip up and stab you. But thank you. You're forgiven, Father, no matter how many times that I sin, your mercy forgives me. And it's all because of the blood. God bless you. God keep you. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood, the blood done shine my. Mm -hmm. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done shine my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood. The blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood done sign.